Hey guys, welcome back to another Viper Unity tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to be showing you guys how to implement in app purchase tracking as well as receipt validation. Now, Viper has two ways to track in app purchases. What you guys can do is you can do basic in app purchase tracking by just saying that someone bought something, or you can go the extra mile by just doing some receipt validation. And believe it or not, people do fake purchases, and you guys want to make sure that you track those down so you guys know exactly how much you're making. So let's hop in into our Unity project. And it's just a basic scene, as we see. But you probably have an in-app purchase manager script, kind of like this. We'll open that up. And you'll see it's the basic iStore listener in-app purchase manager. As you guys can see here, we're just decoding some receipts from the purchase product. And we have some code blocks for Unity Android and Unity iOS. Now, if you guys are just going to be implementing Viper's in-app purchase tracking, you probably won't be needing any of this, but you guys will probably still want to have this so you guys can segment your purchases based off of your theory from Android or iOS. So let's quickly show how you guys would figure that out. Let's first import the Viper SDK into the script. And let's go Viper. Dot track in app purchase event. So what we're gonna to want to do is just basic because this is an Android. We're just gonna say it's a Google Play Store. And this detail is just for you guys so that you can get a good breakdown of where your in app purchases are coming from. The currency, so we're going to want to grab the purchase product, the purchase event args, purchase product dot the metadata, and we want that ISO currency code. And now we're going to want the float amount, so let's first typecast what is going to be the amount into a float, and we're going to want the purchase product again. metadata and the localized price from there we're going to want to have the string item ID now this is the item ID from the store that got purchased so we're, we're going to want to do the same thing but this time we're going to want the definition we're going to want the store specific ID And the category so you guys can just put this as yourself because we ha saw up here all the way up here it is a gold coin so we're just going to call it coin pack and really all you need to do is copy this bring it down here and change this to apple app store apple app store and there you go. That is how you just do basic in-app purchase tracking without receipt validation. Now, to get farther into receipt validation, I gotta remind you that when you guys do set up a game, if we go to our dashboard, to Byte Brew, we do set up a game. The reason why we require you guys to input the shared secret, or for Google, we, we want you to implement the Google license key, is so that we can do receipt validation because these are required in order to know if this is a valid receipt from the actual app that it occurred in. To finish it off, to do in-app purchase tracking with receipt validation, let's start the code and let's just do bytebrew.track Google in-app purchase event. And that's the reason why we have, we have these code blocks so that we can just segment these events towards the certain right arguments that we need to pass through. So as always, it's, we're gonna wanna put in the store that I occurred on. And we're gonna want the currency code again. And then we're gonna want the float amount. And the localized price new line and then we're going to want the store specific ID again through the definition 
Now, we do put in coin pack because that's a category. And now, before we had this, we did set up this area where we could unwrap and decode certain JSON format within our receipt. And as you can see, there's five different stuff here. One, one area is just for Apple and the others are just for Google. It is kind of difficult to get the right format of what you need in order to do in a purchase validation. And so we've been trying to test out, you know, what is the best way to decode a, a JSON format within Unity and everything. And this is the best way we found out how to do it. So we have this store and payload. This stuff is just for Apple, as well as right here, GP, Google Play details and Google Play JSON signature is just for the tracking of Google in-app purchases. So because we're doing a Google in-app purchase right here, let's first put in, let's first put in the receipt and that's gonna be the JSON right here. We want this. And then the signature, we want the GP signature. And there you go. That event for that purchase will be sent out to our servers and then we'll be able to track Google in-app purchase events and, and receive validation for them. So for now, Apple, let's do a byte brew. Track iOS in-app purchase event. It's the same exact thing. Let's copy the details that we need so we don't have to rewrite them all. And let's add in the last things we need, which is the receipt. And the receipt for this is the payload right here. We need this. And there you go. Let's first let's let's copy this and you know because this is not an Android area and we want to we want to put this into our iOS area and let's paste it down here. And there you go. You guys have done tracking in app purchases without receipt validation for both iOS and Google. And you guys have done tracking in app purchases with receipt validation for both Google and iOS. You guys want to make sure that you do implement these so you guys can see your revenue and you guys can see what purchases are valid and which aren't. So there you guys go. I hope you guys enjoyed this Viper Unity tutorial and hope to see you guys on the next one.